Welcome to this tutorial of Next.js 13. This is a Next.js crash course. Basically, we're going to go over everything that Next.js 13 release and all the new changes. So let's see what we are going to be looking at. So all the new features and starting off with routing and layout. So basically on the new Next.js 13, there is a new file system based router that was built on top of server component that supports layout, nested routing, a loading state error handling and more then we are going to be moving into the server component everything on the app directory is basically the server component and we're going to look into how to work with server component and then we're going to jump into some data fetching next just 13 kind of simplified data fetching with a single weight supporting react component and the fetch api so there was a nice combination between these two to make it very easy to fetch data and for that we're going to be jumping into image component link component and also the font let's jump right into it so the first thing we're going to be looking at is the routing and layout so what does routing and layout do let's jump back into our vs code and start looking into the code so first we need to of course install the new version of the next js 13 on our folder so first what i'm going to do is npx create next dash app at latest dash dash experimental app if you're not sure about the spelling on this you can come back onto this on this website beta.nextjs.org here is the documentation for the 13. If you're not sure about some of the comment, you can come on to this website and check it out. So once we've done that, we click enter. It's going to prompt us to name our project. I'll call it next 13. I don't want any TypeScript or ESLint for this project since we're going to be just looking into the features. So once I'm inside my project file, I'm going to run the app npm run dev. So localhost. You see it says one thing you have enabled experimental feature that means all the feature that is on 13 some of the features are on the beta still so we have that enabled that means those features are available to us as well so we can experiment with the 13 feature and that can be found in next.config as well if you don't want any 13 feature you can turn it off but for now we have that turned on here so we can look into the 13 as well the project once we launch, this is what it looks like, Next.js 13. And you can see one thing that we have a new directory called the app. And we have our pages as well, but inside the pages, we don't we only have API. So what is happening here? So Next.js 13 in introduced a new file system based routing that build on top of React server component. Now in the next slide, we're gonna be dive more deeper into the server component. But for now, all you need to remember is everything inside the app is basically a server component. That means it's running in the server. So for example, this page is the root page. So everything you see in here is in the roots. Let me just delete everything for now. Make it a little simple. Main page. Let's write that. See here. So now what does it mean by server component? That means everything in here is running on the server base it's not on the client base so i can do a console log in here console log let's say hello in here right so once we do that and we inspect you see that console log is not on the ui so it's not on the client side it's console logging on the server. So that means on the VS code is console logging. So it's running on the server side. That now that's a really awesome feature of a Next.js. That means running everything on the server, it minimizes the JavaScript load time and is optimize your web application. So it makes it a lot more faster. It also a file based system. So you have like nested routing as well. So it have a support for layout nested routing we can also create some loading state and error handling on this app as well so let's look into all those features so first we have a layout right we have a page pages like the main index almost like index.js so we, it's like the root page and then we have a layout now what does the layout do out here it's almost like the html of your whole application of your whole app so in here you see the layout takes a children 
and it kind of inserts that children into the body. What that does is there's it creates a relationship between the layout and the page. So the page is basically a, the children. So everything the layout is implementing in onto the children is the page. So everything you define on the page is going into the children and into, into the body of the layout. So for example, if I type in H1 here, layout, and we have children underneath, and we go back to a local host, we have a layout outside of, outside of the page. But this, this way you can also create a nav bar, right? So if you want some a nav bar component that you want to share between your whole project, you can create a nav bar and put it on the layout and that being shared throughout the project in other areas as well. For example, we can do some file routing here. We can create a file called about. And in here, in order to create an index of that about, we have to create a page just like you create it over here. There's a page and layout relationship. You also, whenever you create a file based routing, you need to create a file called page. And that page is going to be our about page. So I have the about page in here. Now notice one thing when I go to about, it also retains the nav bar. That means on the root layout, on the root layout, we have the nav bar and it's been shared throughout the project. Now on here, we can also create another layout inside this about. We can create a layout as well. Now here we can create our about layout, so RAFCE, and then we create about layout. Let's go back to our file, refresh it. So you see they have an about layout in here. So this is a nav bar, it's the root layout, it's coming from the root layout, and then we have about page that is coming from the about layout. Now, in order to have the page display on our on the layout, you have to do this children, and then you put that children in here. So that way, it kind of importing all the pages and is inserting on the children. So you have the about page shown in here. So you have to notice one thing every time you. This is actually optional. You don't need that. You can create the page by itself, but if you want something that you're sharing within our about page, you can create a layout to make it easier. And at the same time, you make sure you import the children as a prop in here and insert it here. So that's about layout. So it's basically a combination of underscore app and underscore doc all into one. You can improve it, do more optimization with it as well. Now the app also come with several other feature, for example, the loading UI state, you can do that in here as well. You can also do some error boundary. So you can create a folder called loading in here. Export function, Ex export default function, loading, and then return something called h1 and then the rolling. So it's basically doing the loading state handling. So right now we don't have a loading state, right? It's a pretty fast website. It's not loading anything. So it's not uploading this loading state. But once we do some fetching of the data, we're gonna look at in a little bit, you're gonna see that loading coming in handy. So we can do that. It's gonna also create a file called error, error.jsx in here, that will do the error boundary. But this is where I'm gonna put it for the layout. I think we have like a nice grasp of what layout is doing. So next, we're gonna look at the server component. Kind of like looked around about the server component. Like when I saw, when I told you here, the console log is loading on the server instead of the client side. So it's not loading on the client UI. So everything fall under the app is going to be like that. By default, Next.js want you to have all of these in the server. Now, if you want a client sided, for example, if you create a component here, let's say you create a component called button.jsx, right? And then you create a button here. And I'll create button. So here I want to create a click button, but this time I want to do is you have an on click. 
So it's a little better if we have a on click on the client side instead of server side. So we have something that client can interact with and we don't want to load this onto the server. So we have a button, but we want to load it on the client side. What we do, we use something called use client. So on the very first of the page, you call use client. And this, what this does is basically opt in this file, this button file we created, button file component into a client side. So right now, when we console log this, it's going to be happening on the client UI, right? So let's go back. Let's uh, go to the about page and bring in that button on the about page. So here. So we have that in there. So about page, we have a button, refresh it. And when we click, you see nothing is happening on the server side. Server side is basically like it was before, but on the client, you see the click is loading. So we change this into a client side, client component instead of a server component. So you might be asking what, when we should be using client side and when we should be using server side. I think Next.js have a, like a nice outline and here it is. So when the server component, you, you are like fetching a data, you should be using a server component. You're accessing a backend resources. You're keeping sensitive information like API token. You are working with that. It should be all in a server component. So it should be all in any of this component. You can do it on a page. Kind of a little overview when you are working with this, you should be using server component. Now, when we are using client component, it's basically when you have some interactivity and you have like an even listener on click on change. You have some on click like button we created. It's like an on click. We have an interaction with it. In this case, we want this to be a client sided instead of server component. You also have some kind of state. You're using use state, use effect, use reducer. You should be doing it on the client side. Browser API, anytime you're using any kind of set timeout or interval or any kind of browser API, you should be using client component and also custom hooks and React class component. Those are the only place where you should be using client component where you specify it this way. And any, anytime else, it should be default server component, which Next.js does it for us. So that's all for our server component. Next, we are gonna be looking at data fetching. Let's jump into the code. So when talking about data fetching on Next.js 13, Next.js 13 introduced a new way to fetch data and manage data in your application. So they kind of combined the fetch API and updated a little bit. So we have some additional functionality like caching and revalidating our API. So in this case, we are gonna be using something called a dummy JSON to fetch our data. And we're gonna be doing some like posts right here. So we have our API right here. Let's do this in our page, or we can create a component, a file called post in here. And inside the post, we create a page directory. And let's create something like this, post page. And in here, we are going to be doing our API fetch. So basically, by default, this is a server component, which is perfect. We can fetch data in here to optimize instead of doing it on the client. So I'm going to create a async function called get data. And in here I'll create cons rest is equal to await. And in here we're going to do this fetch JSON that dummy json.com slash post. So in here we should have all the posts and then we're going to return our data as a JSON. So we have that fetch going on in here. So the next just 13 want you to use something like this, where you do a async await into in a server component, and then you fetch it inside that async await function. Now, once we have that, all you need to do is co you come back to the page post page component. And in here we do is const data, let's say is equal to await. 
Now this need to be an as async as well. I'm here. Await you create get data. So we have our data being fetched. Let's console log our data in here. Let's see what it look like. So we come into our web app here on the browser, and then I jump into the post. So we create a file based routing here called post. So let's go back into that route. Once we, when there, you see there's a loading happening. I think for a millisecond, you see some really quick loading. That's coming from right here, we created earlier. So we create a loading UI state. So this is being imported and worked on that fetch API. See, so fetching is an async await function. So that means there's some time where we are loading the data and we are fetching the data. That's where the loading UI states come in. And you can see a little bit, the loading is there. So we can create like one, two, three here as well. You can see that there as well see one two three so it's very quick but that's a nice thing about the next year 13 having the loading ui and error boundary as well which we didn't create for this project but you can also create that as well so let's jump right back into our code of the page um that's gonna be right here so here we have inside our data on the server component, we have everything console log on the VS code. So we have everything inside the post. So what we can do is we can come in here, create an H1 called all post, and we can map through all of them in a UI UL syntax. So we create data dot post dot map item item. Uh, this already have an ID, so we can create it as a key for that. And the here we do is return this item, key dot item dot ID. That's great. And then we do is item dot, uh, let's say title in here. And then let's do a P tag where we do is item dot body right so all the posts is in there for the title we can do an h3 and move that into our title so basically what we are doing is we are grabbing the data from the our get data function which is async await fetching the data and we are making our page as an async await function and we are kind of mapping to our posts and we're dumping our data in a loose item. Let's see what it looks like in our project. So right here, you see we have the all posts that we created and is mapping through all of our post API data. So now, if you're coming from the old version of Next.js, you guys are used to uh, get server-side props and all these other server-side component that they had before. But right now, they are not doing that anymore, like get server side prop, get static prop, conditional prop. So they are not supported on the new app directory. So anytime you come inside this, those are basically not going to work. So in here, you have to work with this. Basically, very easy. They made it super easy to work with fetching an API, just the async await function, and then you fetch the data, and then you kind of async await in here. Now, this fetch also comes with additional feature. Next.js kind of modified a little bit. So if you're doing some caching, we can do that. You can create here, or you can revalidate. That is basically means it's going to revalidate every amount of time you set. So I can come in here and create a curly basis. I call our next, and then inside the next, I create revalidate and then that's a 60 second so in here this feature is basically on the next 13 so they kind of beefed up the fetch api a little bit by adding this feature so every time every 60 second is going to revalidate and it's going to fetch a new version of the api 
So you have like an updated API in here, which is pretty awesome. It comes right out of the box. You can also do a bit more like caching as well, which we're going to look at in the future project. But for now, you can do this as well. It's, I think we have like a very strong idea on how to fetch your data on our next 13 application. And we already did that in here. Really nice, easy way. You can also have some additional feature as well. For more information, you can come back to this doc and read more about it. I think that's create a really nice in introduction for that. So next we are going to be looking into the updated image and link and also the new font feature that they added on the next 13. Let's jump right into it. So let's talk about the next image optimization a little bit. On the new next 13, they introduce a powerful new image component that kind of ships with less client-sided code. It's easier to load that way and it's more faster and it's also more accessible at the same time. So let's uh, jump into our project. Um, I'm going to get some image from Unsplash. Let's create some coding image from here. Let's get that one, I'll download it. So I have my image on the public right here. And next, I'm going to bring in the image right here. They already have it in, imported here. So once we have that, all we do is we're going to import some background image. So in here, I'll create a background image from, let's say, public, and then a PG main. And here, we create the image component. SRC is the background image. And for the width, let's say we want a width of 500. Let's see how it looks like on our website. So here you see we have the image in place and it's loading nicely. So that's how you do the image. It's pretty straightforward, just as before as, as we did on the previous Next.js. But here we have a more improved performance. It serve on different devices more correctly than previous generation. It also have a faster load time. So this image works really great. So next we're going to do some link. So on our root file, I'm going to create some link that goes to our post and about. I'll bring in the link as well. Import link from next link. So let's talk about the link a little bit. Let's create some link in here, L-I-N-K. And in here, we call this about, let's create another link called post. And in here, we create href, and then we go to about. And here, same thing as well, href, and then we go to slash post. Now see one thing, in the previous generation of Next.js, we used to do an anchor tag as well. But right now, they got rid of it. We don't do that anymore. It's just straight up simple link and then whatever you name it on the link. Let's go back to our website and check the link. We have this about, let's click the about, goes to the about. We have some UI, client side UI on the click and it's retaining the about page. Let's go back and go to the post. It's loading a little bit and then return the post. So again, about and the posts. So we have it all link, put it in there. So we updated the, our app with the link, with a new link component, kind of a little updated from the previous version as well. And next we are going to jump into the font. So for the font, they kind of like optimize the font and it's in the beta mode, the next font. And we automatically optimize your font and you can also import our Google font. Any Google font, it already come out of the box. So first thing you do, you install the font. I'll call it npmi at next font. Once you do uh, install the font, all you have to do is you go to the layout and in the layout, you need to import whatever font you're looking for. For my case, I'm going to import inter which is Next.js use on the website. And it's coming from the font we installed slash Google. So that means 
is reaching out to the Google font. So any font you so any font you find on Google font will be in here. So you will be able to grab any font from here and then use it on our application. So it's really easy, really awesome to work with. And it's showing some error because we need to restart it after we install the font. We're gonna do that shortly, but right here, let's configure the font a little bit. So after you import the font, what you do is you initialize the font. So you load the font. So I call it cons inter is equal to inter. And then you initialize it. And after that, you put it into our HTML tag. So the layout will have the HTML tag. So right now I'm on the main layout. So the root layout. And then all I do in here is go to the HTML and create a class name on the, on the HTML tag. And I'll put in inter dot class name. Once I have that, my font will load up. But right now I need to restart the server because I installed a new font package. Once I have that, it should load up. So right now you see the font is still old and the new, new font is still not there. That's when I go to the, I go to the global CSS and I call in the inter. Once I have that, you see the font changes to the inter font. I can look at the font awesome as well. Or the font ninja, you see the inter font is here. Go to the post. Let's go to the post and see the font changes here as well. So everything is working as expected. It's looking really nice. And we also touch upon a lot of different features of the next just 13. Now, another feature is the turbo pack, which is an incremental bundler optimized for JavaScript and TypeScript written in Rust and built into next just 13. So if you go to the turbo pack website, you see they have a diagram over here. Like next just 13 is using it. Once when you use that on the next just 13 it's super fast because it was built on top of the Rust and they got rid of the web pack and now they're using this turbo pack for the bundler. The way you initialize it is when you start an app, you do is with turbo pack. And then when you're doing the development, you do NP and next dev slash slash turbo. That's basically how you turn on the turbo pack and opt into it. And it's one other powerful feature that next just 13 brings. To do a recap on this video if you make sure you like this video you subscribe to my channel and turn on the no notification i also go live every week so you can come back to my live session ask any question if you have and we can talk about a lot of different things on my live videos and i have a lot of cool projects coming up so stay tuned for it and i'll see you on the next video bye